in this video how AI can help the voiceover artist. Are you a voiceover living in fear of AI? I mean, let's face it, artificial intelligence technology is here to stay, including computer-generated voiceovers that are now actually sounding incredibly lifelike. Remember, it's important to approach voice training with patience, consistency, and proper technique. And because of this, many voiceover artists are reacting with horror. Oh my goodness, help! As human voiceovers won't be needed anymore. AI voice creation programs will take over our jobs. Well, look, get over it. AI has already replaced some of our jobs, but no I only said some. AI-generated voiceovers are only going to actually affect the really dull and tedious scripts that never paid us well anyway. I mean, do you really want to record another boring health and safety contractor guidance script for internal use in a factory? When you're in your car, you listen to your sat-nav, do you fear missing out on voiceover jobs like this? Oh, what fun, reading out every place name and road name on the planet. Of course not. For boring, non-creative projects like this, let the synthesized computer voice do it. Look at it from the client's point of view. For example, um, a client who wants to make a low-budget factual audiobook recording. Now, a factual audiobook won't have diverse fictional characters popping up with various emotions or different accents required. So a good AI-generated voice will be fine for something like this. They'd paste in the factual book script, click a few buttons, the audio file will be generated with a consistent voice style throughout the often many hours worth of pages recorded. A check afterwards, the job's done. The output voiceover recording won't be creative, won't win any awards, you know. The AI voice will just create a utility voiceover file for that specific job. Yeah, it does the job. However, for voiceover scripts with any amount of varying emotion required, or a character voice, different accents with the same bass voice style, or where the script needs to be very carefully directed to help change subtle nuances of the performance, human voices will always be needed. And I mean, always. The likes of ad agency people and documentary and drama producers will make sure of that. After all, you can't direct an AI voice like a human being. It's not like you can underline a few words on the input text and twiddle some controls to change the emotions effectively exactly where you want it. Oh, you can do it to an extent, but practically to do this properly, it would take ages to reprogram, and even then the voice would still not sound exactly as you may need it. Try telling a robot after a take in a directed session, mm, nice read, love, but it needs an additional air of hopelessness, and you need to give the final sentence an extra element of pathos, and maybe a touch of lost pride on those final two sentences. Can you do that for me? Uh, no, that's not going to happen, is it? So us voiceovers need to stop marketing to the clients who deal with the types of low-budget utility work where AI voices will just do. We need to find clients who are working on projects where us voice actors can really be appreciated. This is the key to us minimizing the impact of AI on voice work. And I'll tell you in a sec how we can all take advantage of this technology. So what we all need to do is to continually improve our skills in voice flexibility, developing new character voices, and upping our game in intelligent script interpretation and, and to enthusiastically work with clients. This way they can see how we can add value to their script far better in all ways than if they were to merely input their text into an AI text-to-speech program. We need to add value to the whole thing so we're part of their team. We're not just reading their script. You know, we can actually advise them on certain things without stepping on their toes. Of course, the client is always right. So we need to discover clients who will give us enhanced personality narration scripts, say character work in radio plays, podcast dramas, commercials, and so on. And, and don't forget, it's not just performance work we offer. It's also quality editing. If you're a professional voiceover, you'll have audio and also hopefully video editing skills as well. So you also need to angle to get more dubbing and synchronization to video work, which us humans will be far more suited to. You can't ask an AI voice to record an English translation of a non-English script 
and then to edit it into the timed gaps of the original video, for example. Many clients don't want the hassle of editing audio files into their existing videos, and they ask the voiceover to do the whole thing. If you're not getting into this kind of video side hustle, then you really ought to, as you're leaving cash on the table. So, how can we use artificial intelligence technologies to our advantage? Well, some of us are already using audio restoration programs using AI in our work. Back to the example of inserting our voices into clients' videos using programs like Adobe Premiere Pro that we teach on VoiceOver Masterclass. You may well get badly recorded interviews provided by the client, and these can be fixed, to an extent, astonishingly well, almost miraculously well, using AI software like Waves VX Clarity or Deverberate. Maybe you've seen my videos demonstrating these things in action. Getting rid of background noise, first of all. I can make all this traffic disappear. Well, maybe not the traffic, but the noise of the traffic. AI technology can take a recording and determine the difference between a human voice and everything that isn't a human voice and take the background away. So let's turn that knob up right now. We're using Waves Clarity VX and the background noise disappears. Well, not completely. It's not that clever, but it is pretty impressive. Imagine you had a recording of an interview done somewhere in a stupid place like this near a freeway and, well, you wouldn't be able to use it. But now with AI technology, you can filter out that background noise and it's usable. And then I did an experiment with Deverberate, getting rid of reverberation or room echo, were actually filmed in my bathroom. I can get rid of all the echo in this bathroom. I'm in a real bathroom, reflective surfaces, this isn't green screen and it sounds terrible. And I know what it's like when you've interviewed someone for a podcast or something and they're in a room with lots of bright surfaces, it sounds terrible. So in your audio editing software, not much you can do about it, is there? Well, now there is with D-Reverberate. Look, let me switch it on and suddenly it sounds like I'm more like in a recording studio. It's got rid of reverberation. It uses AI technology to work out what a human voice is and what the reverberations are, and it gives you a far better sound. But you know artificial intelligence can help create new styles and new character voices. You may be well aware of the variety of online voice changing programs out there, and they give the impression that a member of the public can simply say into a microphone, hello, I'm Donald Trump, you know, or whatever, and they expect the computer to make it sound like Donald Trump himself. Uh, no, it won't. It's really not that clever. But you see, if you're a trained voice actor and you've carefully analyzed the characteristics of a voice you wish to impersonate, maybe for a comedy show or whatever, the timings, the pitch slides, the emotions and so on, and you're almost there, then the AI program can really help to put the cherry on the top. Look, I'm old, I'm British, I'm, off, I'm often asked to record scripts in a David Attenborough type of voice, you know. To be honest, my Attenborough voice is okay, but it ain't great. But now with a good AI program, this can vastly improve it by adding nuances taken from recordings of Sir David's actual voice or other impersonators who contribute to a forum. Let me show you. Here's my real voice recording this. And I believe that all of us can do our best to try to preserve planet Earth. It's okay, but maybe it has too much resonance. It needs more husky elements to sound more realistic. So let's crank up voice.ai. And by the way, if you click the link somewhere around this video, you can download voice.ai for free. It's really worth checking out. So in voice.ai, I choose the Attenborough voice, upload my file that you've just heard. And after processing, it now sounds like this. And I believe that all of us can do our best to try to preserve planet Earth. It's pretty impressive, I have to say. So please download voice.ai for free. See how you get on with it. There are loads of presets. You can upload your own voice for others in the community to play with as well. This is Peter Baker, and I'm using this voice changer to sound like another Baker, Tom Baker, a Doctor Who from the 80s. What do you think? Some voices are better than others, but the technology is only going to get better as time goes on. You know, even if you weren't creating actual 
impersonations in your regular day-to-day -day voice work for a comedy podcast or whatever, you could use something like voice.ai to take your professional performances and create new voice styles and character voices so you can offer clients more variety. At last, those translated interview scripts where the client wants you to sound like two or three different people in the same job, yeah? If you had those, <laughs> now it's possible. You need to really remember the recipe of every new useful voice you can create. In other words, remember the style of your original recording, the recording you adapted it with, and all your AI program settings, and you can create more showreels and more variety to your clients. It's not cheating, in my opinion. It's still your own script interpretation. It's still your performance. You're still taking into consideration the uh, emotions required, the timings, the breaths, and so on. But you're enhancing it with an AI voice changer using other voice elements and characteristics to make it sound different. For years, I've been recording various monster and demon voices for video games. And uh, after recording, I lower the pitch by a semitone quite often. Sometimes I add reverse reverb effects if the client wants me to do that. And doing what I've just explained is just taking this tweaking or enhancement to another level. Just think of the possibilities. Maybe you could concoct a new convincing hard announcer voice, a news anchor voice, or a frail old person character voice, or a cool surf dude character, or a wide variety of new authentic accents or voices that sound convincingly like the opposite sex. Just experiment, have fun. Look, I hope you found all this useful and inspirational. And for a wide range of training courses on all things voiceover, please check out voiceovermasterclass.com. All one word. We'll see you there on the net. Loads of courses, loads of information. All the best. Have a good day in the booth.